Hi, I'm Julian Baker, and this is Records in My Life. I'm staying in tonight. I won't stop you from leaving. I know that I'm not what you Hi guys, thanks as always for checking out Records in My Life. We're here with Julian Baker. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you today? Good, thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm happy to be here. First of all, congratulations with all the success with the tour. Oh, Things thank to be seen you. going really well. And yeah, I'm really excited. This tour has been amazing. And uh, like, you know, we talked a little bit about, but um, I'm just so happy about this lineup is incredible. Half Wave and Adam are two incredible artists that I just adore. And so it's been really nice getting to share the stage with them every night. I know your dad had, you had some guitars lying around the house when, yeah. you, were, when you were younger and you learned. So first of all, what, do you, what kind of guitar did you learn how to play on part one? <laughs> You'll see it. It is. Oh, nice. So I bring, I started incorporating an acoustic guitar into the act because some of the songs are recorded acoustic, but I never bothered to bring it. I just played them the electric version. But so this little plywood Yamaha, or it's not plywood, but you get what I mean. It's like just a Yamaha acoustic guitar, um, like a beginner level quality. And uh, I used to borrow it when he wasn't using it because he bought it, you know, to teach himself guitar and began to do that. And then I would take it and practice in my room secretively. Nice. And uh, eventually it accrued all these stickers and the stickers have accumulated in such a way that you can't really see the, the wood grain of the guitar anymore. It's just kind of this funny um, keepsake instrument, but I decided I wanted to play with that one. So when I play acoustic guitar in the set, I play that very guitar. So is there an album which you learned um, to play I that on? probably... The records, I wish, like, I wish that I could say I learned blues scales by listening to Robert Johnson. <laughs> but I didn't, you know? I well, okay. learned, I, I appreciate Robert Johnson and Django Reinhardt now because I, you know, part of being a music lover is voraciously consuming new music and expanding my taste. But when I was 12 years old teaching myself scales, I was listening to... Take This to Your Grave by Fall Out Boy and American mm. Idiot by Green Day and My Chemical Romance. And that's what I was sitting there listening to, you know, just like hanging out. And I would sit in my room and play those songs over and over and over again. I didn't even like really understand how a scale worked or music theory. I had tried to take piano lessons, but I was a poor, poor student. I was so bad and frustrated my teacher to no end. Could not mm. wrap my mind around music theory, but I could learn like oh this is the shape that makes this particular noise and then um for a long time before I was in college you know it was just a little bit above like that episode of friends where Phoebe is saying oh this is old lady with a cat chord and this is flower chord you know just like I don't know but give us an album that's kind of flown under the radar which you can really recommend to us oh my gosh um, I'm trying to think of what I have been listening to recently. That Phoebe Bridgers record. I feel like a broken record. Dang. But I'm sh so I feel like a broken record about it. But um, I keep talking about that record because it's so, so moving. And so I had the opportunity to tour with Phoebe, God, almost two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago. And she just has an unreal talent as a songwriter. And, um seeing the record finally come out and all all the you know attention it's getting i think is very well deserved and it's some of the best songwriting of the year i think also that big thief record right. i don't know if you're a big thief fan yes it's a yeah, it's a little oh nice record my. capacity is yes a capacity um wow when mythological beauty the single came out earlier this year it was all i could listen to like I don't know. I just didn't want to hear anything else. Do you have time for one more quick one? Yeah, sure. If let's you do could it. be in the studio to record Ooh. an album, or if you were there for an album to be a part of the session, 
Is there one from your collection which you'd... Oh, my gosh. I would have been there for maybe The Albatross by Foxing, just to see how that came together. Or maybe Keep You by Pianos Become the Teeth. Um, I would have loved it. And then there's, like, some classics I would have loved to be there for, like um, Rumors. Imagine being in the room, like Rumors or um, Darkness on the Edge of Town, just when those things are materializing. But then in the studio is much different, I suppose, than the songwriting process. Like, I would love to know what was going through those people's minds when those songs were coming together and, and the place they were when they were writing them. But Rumors has crossed so many generations. I mean, it's when I was a kid, we... But then you bring it up in a lot of younger people in your age. You oh, know, they, yeah. Rumors is... It's permanently relevant. Yeah, that that record, and then also I'm like a huge Springsteen fan.